Let's talk about the big reveal of the new gun that you all already know about anyways, because as you've heard me say in the past, press embargoes where gun writers aren't allowed to discuss a new gun before a certain date set by the manufacturer are worthless bullshit and guns always leak because no one in the industry can keep a secret. So you know what this is, but the good news is you're watching TFB TV for our top notch takes on concealed carry guns. I'm James Reeves, this is the Smith & Wesson CSX, and here's the gist. Smith & Wesson made an all-metal, single-action-only pistol in 9mm that's smaller and lighter than the Smith & Wesson shield, while somehow holding nearly double the capacity. That's your big headline right there, smaller and lighter than a polymer single-stack 9mm, but holds five more rounds. This new gun's called the Smith & Wesson CSX. We run it through a mini 500 round torture test and a little saltwater dunk today on TFB TV. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna drop it in like hard. Yeah. Now let's go back to the Smith & Wesson Shield. I've got one around here. The Smith & Wesson Shield was introduced 10 years ago as a light and thin single stack nine millimeter with a total capacity of eight rounds. It proved to be reliable, cheap, and an easy to conceal handgun. It became wildly popular as a result. It was upgraded with the M&P 2.0 feature set a few years later with a better trigger, better grip stippling, and a few other upgrades. Now just last year, Smith introduces the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus, which is an excellent double stack micro compact, barely larger than the Shield, but holding 11 rounds and somehow being lighter than the original Shield in weight. It was surprising then to see Smith introduce another Micro Compact 9 double stack just three months after the Shield Plus, the CSX. You might initially dismiss the CSX as a metal frame shield plus, but that would be wrong. The name CSX derives from Chief's Special X, and unfortunately, DMX, famous for saying ride or die. He uh, stopped riding last year, which means he, uh... anyway, Smith & Wesson was pretty upset that he couldn't do the theme song for this gun, but the Chief's Special designation has been used by Smith in the past to designate a premium carry gun like the old CS9 from 1999, a single stack 9mm with an aluminum frame. Everyone knows you add an X to the end of the name and boom, it means it's from the future. This kinda is. Borrowing very little from the M&P series, Smith built this gun from the ground up to be as small and as light as possible while still having a metal frame. Shockingly, this gun weighs an ounce less than the plastic frame shield. This is probably because the strength of aluminum means that less aluminum is required to make the frame, as opposed to the amount of polymer needed to make a strong enough plastic frame, in addition to the metal rails and the substructures that polymer frames need to work. So there's not a lot of material. That makes the CSX very thin, very light, but also strong, like a miniature schnauzer. That's my guess anyways. Even though the CSX is smaller and lighter than the Shield, it holds more ammo and it's fully ambi. I'd say it's a gun with an 11 round capacity with a flush fit magazine, but the 12 round magazine you see here is the perfect size, barely larger than the 10 round magazine while giving you an extra two rounds. Really, it makes the grip a perfect length because the 10 rounder requires you to dangle a pinky while the 12 rounder adds just a fraction of an inch to make this a gun that you can just barely get a good grip on. The 12 round mags and how well they work with this gun, that's a huge selling point here to me. And I would just as soon say that this is a 13 round gun truly as it is an 11 round gun. It's only 0.9 inches thick just about everywhere except the grip and the controls which add about a tenth of an inch. It also comes with a slim back strap if you want to get this gun as thin as you can possibly get it. An unfortunate drawback of the CSX being designed from the ground up as a new pistol means that there was no way for it to be mag compatible with the Shield Plus. The goal here, again, was to make the gun as tiny as possible, and in order to do that, the mag had to be designed from scratch too. There's also not any holster compatibility with any other designs. Another blatantly obvious design change is that, of course, it's got a hammer. This is a single action only handgun, just like a 1911. The gun can only be fired after the hammer is cocked. Typically, handguns that are hammer-fired, single-action only, tend to have much shorter trigger pulls with less play 
than a traditional double action, single action, or even a striker fired handgun. This also means that you can carry the gun cocked and locked, that is with a hammer cocked and the safety on. So your first trigger pull will be light, but you have to disengage the safety to get there. Now let's talk about the trigger. Smith & Wesson did a good job. It's crisp and it's short, albeit heavier than I would like in a single action gun. Now Smith says it's seven pounds out of the box, but after I ran mine pretty rough today, it's now five to five and a half pounds. That's acceptable. The short, crisp trigger pull helps, but I'd still like to see this in the four pound range. It's got a thumb safety after all. That said, the main issues I had with this gun were somewhat related to the trigger. First, the trigger reset has what's called a false reset, where you get a very slight click on the return travel of the trigger that might fool you into thinking the gun's ready to fire again. Listen, little click, big click. And one more time, little click, big click. You barely hear the little click, but you can feel it just a tad right there. And if you go to pull the trigger back, nothing's gonna happen until you let it all the way out. So twice, when I shot this gun for the first time, I didn't let the trigger out far enough to let it reset. Once I figured out what was going on, it never happened again. That's fucking weird. I wonder if that's me not letting, I think I'm not letting the trigger reset. I think that's what it is. And for the record, it never happened to Ryan after he saw it happen to me. Smith & Wesson fans are gonna say it's not a big deal. Haters are gonna say that this means you're certainly going to die if you buy this gun. And I would say, if the first time you ever fire this gun is in defense of your life, or when one of those guys under the interstate tries to wash your windshield, it could cause a problem. But if you do what you're supposed to do and you get your reps in with the gun before you carry it, you probably not run into an issue. Second, I think Smith was wise to make this an ambi gun with an ambi safety lever, and further, I'm sure there had to have been some debate in the engineering department over whether to have a larger, easier to swipe safety lever, or if having a safety lever that was too big would kind of go against the overall spirit of having an ultra slim gun. They ultimately went with a very slight but serviceable safety lever, I would have preferred something a little bit larger than this, and I hope an enlarged safety lever maybe becomes an option. This could probably also be a non-issue with practice, or if you have smaller hands, but certainly for me, the first few times I drew from concealment, I was mashing my thumb on this thing like I was sitting at a video poker machine with my mom's social security check. I usually save the negatives for the end of the video, but as I am smack dab in the middle of a bitch fest, I may as well continue with the other minor complaints that I have, or I should say that Ryan had. If you ride this grip a little bit too high, there might not be enough beaver tail here to protect the web of your hand. Therefore, slide bite is a possibility, as you can see in this slow motion shot, where the CSX gets a little snippy with young Ryan. Did you do the same thing? No, slide bite. I had no issues whatsoever with this. My last minor complaint, it should probably come standard with night sights. The regular three dot night sights that it has are just fine, but as a dedicated carry piece, night sights would be helpful in low light. And the theme of low light, this gun doesn't come with a rail, or at this point at least, a way to mount optics. I like having options as much as the next guy, but adding a larger beaver tail, larger safety, optics compatibility, a rail, next thing you know, you've got RoboCops Auto 9. I'm not saying that these things aren't important. They are very much important, but this is intended to be a deep carry, ultra slim, ultra compact pistol. After my slew of gripes, let me say this. When I heard about this gun, I was disappointed. Why is Smith & Wesson doing this when they have a perfectly good Shield Plus in the cupboard? When I picked it up, I was disappointed. I didn't quite see what this did that a Shield Plus didn't other than, I don't know, be metal. The emotional roller coaster continued when I actually got this gun home and I held it up against the Shield and the Shield Plus. That's when I saw just how small this gun is. The question eventually turned itself on its head whenever I shot the CSX next to the Shield Plus because now I'm asking myself, why even have a Shield Plus when you can do a CSX, maybe even one in polymer if you wanted to? They're both excellent guns, but the CSX trigger is 
better. I mean, that stands to reason it's a single action only. It's smaller, and relative to the CSX, the Shield Plus is so tall that it feels like you're shooting it with a periscope. The CSX may evoke mixed reactions for its appearance, and I'm sure there are some people out there who might think that this is a good looking gun, but the almost disproportionately tiny slide combined with the chubby grip made it look a little weird to me. Once you get it on the range, it all makes sense. It's got a very low bore axis, and the slide's super thin. It's enough to accommodate ambidextrous controls while keeping the gun mostly flush with itself top to bottom. I guess what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't want to see Smith & Wesson change this gun just to make it look cooler because it works. The bottom line here is the best feature about this gun is its capacity relative to its size. I would just as soon call this a 13 round gun. This isn't really a 10 plus one, it's a 12 plus one with the option to use a smaller mag, and I really do appreciate that. Smith gives you the option of using the abbreviated 10 round magazine, but the 12 round magazine adds something like maybe a quarter inch or less to the height, and it makes the grip feel just right. There's almost no sense in buying 10 round mags for this gun if you get one. Even with the 12 rounder, it's still incredibly small, so I'm glad that Smith didn't force a 12 plus one size frame on us. They gave us the option to make the CSX as small as possible, or to get a little extra capacity and a little extra purchase. So we ran five to 600 rounds through it at the range. Of course, I didn't clean it or leave it beforehand because I'm lazy garbage. 600 rounds isn't exactly a torture test, but most issues tend to rear their ugly heads within a half case session. We had no failures whatsoever, and we even dumped it in a bucket of brackish bayou water a couple of times, continued to run, no problems at all. We had no failures this entire day. I'm gonna drop it in like hard. Is that one rolling? Yep. Accuracy was excellent for a gun this small, in no small part, due to the single action trigger. The Shield Plus already has a pretty good trigger, but when I shot the two head to head, I felt like I shot the CSX as accurately, but faster. Non-scientific test, the Shield Plus, which I happen to like a lot, I think it's got a fantastic trigger, 10 yards, six inch steel target and then I'm going to shoot it 10 rounds out of it and I'm going to pick up the CSX and do the exact same thing kind of see if there's any difference let's give it a shot all right nine out of ten not bad now CSX Nine out of 10, but I feel like that was a lot faster too. And I also just dipped the shit out of that first shot. And I think this is a low bore axis coming into play because I felt I could kind of track my sights through recoil a little bit better with the CSX than the Shield Plus. So to conclude, the CSX really is amazing and it's worthy of the Chief's special designation. It's got a lot of potential. It's all metal. It holds 13 rounds of nine millimeter, but it's about the same size as many single stack nine mils. And for an all metal gun, the $600 MSRP is in line with many of the plastic guns. There's a lot to be excited about, but at this point, the trigger, like your mom, should lose a little weight. Moreover, the so-called false reset could pose an issue for some shooters. Finally, the inability to add a light or an optic could be off-putting to some buyers, even a deal breaker. However, the bottom line is that Smith really has done something different than the rest of the market, making the CSX very small, very light, very compact while retaining excellent accuracy and perhaps best in class capacity, depending on how you define that. In my opinion, the only factor that bothers me is the trigger, and if that's improved, the CSX deserves a title shot at the World Heavyweight Micro Compact Championship belt. A lot of potential, great gun. I was impressed. Guys, thank you so much as usual for watching. Thank you to our sponsors, Ventura Munitions. Ventura, of course, sent all the ammo that we used in this video. Thank you to Top Gun Supply. You guys may not know this. If you get on Patreon or Subscribestar, you sign up at the five or the $10 level, you are automatically entered to win one of four guns that we give away every month by the generosity of Top Gun Supply. But we're just glad you're watching. Thanks for staying tuned. Take care.